All right, hello guys, and welcome to my second fall forecast for 2019. I'm probably going to make three of these because I like to make one right before the season that we're forecasting, just so it can be the latest, most accurate information, obviously. It probably won't be too different from this one, though. So I am going to be making my second fall forecast today. If this is your first video that you're watching, I'd highly recommend that you do subscribe and make lots of seasonal forecasts like this, monthly forecasts, and even forecasts for storms that are happening right now, like hurricanes, severe weather events, snowstorms, and all sorts of weather stuff. So if that is helpful to you, I would highly recommend subscribing. I also make live streams sometimes. That's kind of a new thing that I'm getting into. I used to do them a lot, but now I'm starting to do them again. Now we're going to get right into it. Today we're going to be talking about our temperature forecast, precipitation forecast, and then overall forecast. And the overall forecast is probably going to be the most useful for you. So stay tuned for that at the end of the video. Now we're going to be talking about our temperature forecast. And you can see there's two main areas of difference here, below average temperatures and then above average temperatures. We're going to go over that. But at the top of the screen there, you can see that there's three shades of each uh, temperature. So above average, there's a, a slight, a medium, and then a high. And then for below average, it's the same story. But you can see we don't even get into the second one here. That means that I don't expect too much of a difference from your normal. Usually in the second shade, that's when you start to feel it. So this might not even be too noticeable, actually. Uh, but over time, th there should be t at times where you will actually feel it, obviously, especially with the cold region, as I expect some troughs to infiltrate there into the Great Lakes region. Again, I'm going to get more into that in the overall forecast. But for now, we're going to stick with our temperature forecast. In the above average temperature region, you can see we start here in the Pacific Northwest. We're expecting slightly above average conditions, as well as the Northern Rockies. And that extends down into California, Nevada, as well as the four corner states. And that goes all the way down into Texas into Louisiana and then into a lot of the Gulf states, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, and then up the East Coast and Mid-Atlantic through South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, and up into New Jersey, New York City, and then up into New England. That's where we're expecting slightly above normal conditions as far as temperatures are concerned. We do have a below average temperature region that extends from the, uh, the Dakotas into Minnesota, into Iowa, into the Great Lakes states, so Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York as well. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to our precipitation forecast at this point. And you can see it's kind of the same story here. Not a lot going on, but I am going to break it down. We're only getting into the first shade of color here once again. But we're going to start with above average precipitation here for the four corner states into Texas and then up through the Mississippi River. So Louisiana, Oklahoma, Arkansas, uh, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, and a little bit of Alabama there as well. Also below average precipitation there for Alabama, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, D.C., Delaware and New Jersey as well. We're going to be expecting below average precipitation. Now this kind of goes with the temperature forecast a lot. Usually on that eastern end of the area you're expecting there to be troughs. That's where you're going to expect above nor uh, average precipitation because that's going to pull the low pressure systems upward and, and really lead to a lot of precipitation. That's why we had a lot of precipitation inland this winter because that's where a lot of the cold stayed. So that's kind of how that usually goes. I just wanted to point that out. So this kind of really correlates with my temperature forecast. And obviously, I really like when my temperature forecast and precipitation forecast correlate because that's just the way it goes in the weather world usually. Now we're going to move on to our overall forecast. Again, I hyped this one up and, and, it, and it really is a beautiful map. I usually do think I put a lot of colors on it. It's kind of like a canvas and I just throw some paint on there. We're going to start in the west and work our way east here. Now, starting in the Pacific Northwest, we have average precipitation. And the reason I'm pointing this out is because we don't normally, as of recently, see average precipitation for this area. But this fall, I am expecting at least average precipitation, which is good news for you guys uh, to be able to get a lot of rain. I think last winter towards the tail end, we did see a lot of precipitation. But once again, we're going to see precipitation. And uh, that's kind of a relief because it's better to get a lot of precipitation up there than to get like none like we've seen in the past. Warmer than normal temperatures there for Idaho down through Nevada, California, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, into Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, and New York City and Long Island as well. That extends into New England, but I did put a different color there. We're going to get into that a little bit later, but we're expecting these warmer temperatures to look like a horseshoe, and we've been seeing this for quite a while. I've mentioned this in a lot of videos. 
Uh, most recently in my July forecast, I highly recommend you check that one out if you haven't already. Again, if you're a new viewer, uh, I'd highly recommend it. Now, we're expecting a flip-flop pattern here in this yellow region from Montana down through Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, northern regions of New Mexico, northern regions of Texas, and then some regions of Oklahoma there as well. We're expecting a flip-flop pattern, and what that means is really we're going to be seeing some high precipitation at some points, some lower amounts of precipitation at some points, and then some higher temperatures at some point and some lower temperatures at some point. I think the weather is going to be all over the place in this region and it's going to be really unpredictable and really just be all over the place. So that's why I called it a flip-flop pattern. Hopefully that makes sense. Now cold at times for this blue region that extends from Montana down through the Dakotas, portions of Wyoming, portions of Colorado, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and a little bit of Iowa there as well. This is really going to be where I'm expecting it to be. It's kind of like the flip-flop pattern area, but it's going to be a little bit colder than that area, I believe. Being a little bit closer to our main cold region, I think that at times you will see a trough set up in this area, and it will be quite noticeable, especially late into November. Now, severe storms here for this red area, I think this is where the two temperatures collide the most, and there's an above average precipitation being expected. I think that this is the most likely area for severe weather, and I usually nowadays like to point that out where I think the most favorable conditions for severe weather is on my monthly and seasonal forecast. So that's what I'm doing right here. So Iowa down through Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, all of you are expecting the most favorable conditions for severe thunderstorms at this point. Now, Arctic blasts here for the Dakotas down through Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and New York. I think that there will be a trough setting up at times, and it should be particularly really cold, especially after the middle point in October. That's usually the turning point during the fall when we really start to see those cold temperatures show up. I, I like the October 15th time frame. That's usually when that switch happens, and all of a sudden it really starts cooling down. Because obviously September is usually quite warm, but at some point during October we see that switch into kind of winter mode set up. And I think that that's when this Arctic black blast region is really going to start feeling noticeable. Uh, and, it, and it, yeah, so I really think there will be a trough setting up at most points. Obviously, there will be a ridge at some points, but a lot of times it'll be quite cold within this Great Lakes region. Now, some cold blasts here from Mississippi up through Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Georgia, uh, Maryland, D.C., Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York. I think that... Again, this is kind of like the cold at times region where I think the trough will at times set up here. And I think there will be a lot of cold fronts, again, especially late where you're going to start feeling the cold finally set in for this area. It could be like last fall where September is really warm and everybody's calling my forecast a bust. But just like last fall, right around October 15th, we felt that switch and it started getting really cold all of a sudden. And a lot of people ate their words then. Um, and that's just that's a major throwback. I, I really miss last fall. And I hope... This fall and winter is just like that. Uh, I can't wait to start making a winter forecast. Not to get off topic, but uh, again, we're expecting warmer conditions there for the East Coast of the United States. So Florida, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, uh, New Jersey, Long Island, New York. We're expecting warmer than average conditions for this area. Uh, again, you could also feel some cold blasts at times, especially late, but I think that it's going to be so warm during the early portion of the fall that it's really going to make the overall three-month period uh, show up as, as warmer than normal after it's all said and done. Then for the New England states as well as New York, we're expecting a later fall than normal. And what I mean by a later fall is later fall foliage. A lot of people travel to this area to see fall foliage, and I think it's going to be a couple of weeks late this fall. It'll still be just as beautiful as always. I've been up there for the fall time before. It is absolutely amazing. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it already. There's nothing like it on earth, I'm convinced. Uh, the reds and the yellows are just so vivid there, and it is absolutely wonderful. And also, you can expect 50s, 60s, and 70s, uh, mostly 50s and 60s there during October, which is just absolutely beautiful. New Hampshire is my favorite, by the way. Not the, it's it's all great, but New Hampshire is my favorite. Um, anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this fall forecast. Again, I will be making a third one probably in about a month. And that's going to be kind of the final fall forecast. And there should be some tweaks, but it shouldn't be too far from this one. This is pretty close to a final forecast, I believe. 
uh, and it should look a lot like this, like I said before. And I'll, like I said in the beginning of the video, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to hit that subscribe button so when I do make that third fall forecast, you do see it and you will be able to stay up to date with my latest content. There will be a August forecast coming out soon in about a month, and then I'm going to start making winter forecasts once again, which is very exciting news. Uh, those are always my favorite to make. And uh, I can't wait to start making those. So about late July time or August, I'm going to start making those. And it's going to be so much fun to get back and rolling. That's when the most people show up and I get the most interaction. So it's going to be absolutely great. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day.